What's going on you guys? Lit Man Tuck is back at it again with another one, book four, Harbinger of Ash. So it's War Eternus, book four, Harbinger of Ash by Charles Dean. And I wanna start off with an apology. Each one of the, um, the prior reviews, I forgot a very important character. I don't even want to say I forgot her. I mean, I just, I just did not put her in. It was, it's weird. Like she was on the forefront of my thoughts, and then when it was time for the review, it was just some type of mental block that I did not talk about her. But Jade is one of the main characters. She is a hero, but one of the main differences about her is she is not trying to kill Lee. They actually teamed up, and I think it was probably a blessing that I did not put her in my previous reviews because. It, it totally would have spoiled things for you guys. I think uh, I didn't do it on purpose. It was totally by accident, but I think that I think it's all working out. But anyway, let's go over go over her powers for a little bit. So she is a very powerful herald. She has the ability to make blood golems or flesh golems. So basically, if there's a dead body on a battlefield, she can take control of it, almost like a like a necromancer. And then if somebody else dies, she takes that body and she smashes into it. So if there's a hundred dead people on the battlefield she can take all those people and smash them together and make this like flesh golem just using different body parts needless to say she is even more desensitized than lee because of two reasons reason number one is because she and to cope with this world she look at she looks at this world as an anime and she's just a character playing a role she looks at all the people's the people as they are as NPC. So she doesn't really even look at them like they're real. And her power deals with dead bodies. So she is constantly playing with dead bodies. And you know, normally uh, before Lee came into the picture, she was pretty much, you know, going about things on her own, just as a ne necromancer would. She also has other cool powers. She can, basically she can control blood. So she can use her own blood and she can make weapons. So she makes katana, she can make, she can make giant, she can make whatever she want with blood. There's one time in the book where she even used her power to actually heal Lee. He was straight up dying and, and she cut, she cut herself and she kind of fused her blood with his and put, she gave him like a blood transfusion. She, tr blood transfusion, blah, blah, blah. So she, um, she used Bridget, took her blood, cut Lee, cut herself, and kind of transfused some blood into Lee. And she was able to like, like just move the blood around through his body. And she was able to heal that dude, man. And so she is a, definitely a very powerful character in the story. One of the most powerful. And she is absolutely insane. Like absolutely funny the entire book. I mean, you just, I'm telling you, get the audible if you can, if you're an audible person. Um, she is an absolute trip, an absolute anime freak. And how often do you see girls out there that are anime freaks? And here's the thing, they probably are, but they probably don't want to tell you, but she is straight up all about that anime. Her hair is blue. She looks like an anime character, the way to describe her. So let me get back to the story. Um, book four, Harbinger of Ashes, probably my favorite book in the series. I like book five, but it took a little while before book five to come out. And so I would just listen to book four over and over and over again. And I mean, it's just so much in this in this uh, one book. Lee is on a straight up adventure. He actually runs into two heralds on this book, maybe even three. I need to go back and read it again to see how many heralds. But he runs into one herald that brings up a really good point. So the thing is, the heralds in this book, it's, it's almost like a freaking um, Highlander thing going on. There can only be one. The heralds need to kill each other. One herald dies. The god dies. But this one herald... He is straight up refusing to fight. And, you know, his power, he can create fruit. He can make trees grow and, and the fruit can have magical powers. And uh, he can bring up defenses for himself. But he is straight up about the nonviolence to the point where Lee, um, they, they came upon a neighborhood close to his. And the people, there were some players in that neighborhood and they was just robbing people. They just took everything from the people and they didn't do anything. They was like, oh, that's cool. You know, you know, we go by the teachings of this Herald and we'll just go and get some more food. So he actually met the Herald and it disgusted Lee, but the dude brought up some good points. He said that, hey, I refuse to fight and I'm not gonna partake in uh, any of this stuff that they you know, want us to do. And, you know, Lee was flabbergasted, um, you know, his people, they were like, what the heck is wrong with this dude? But the women, they kind of agreed with this guy. If none of the, think about this, if none of the heralds fought, they could just live on for centuries and everybody could live in peace. 
And so it, it, it kind of like threw him off for a little bit. So skipping to another aspect of the book, Lee is getting a little bit darker. Uh, like I said, he's not, he's not, he never gets evil in the book, but he gets darker and he gets more desensitized, but also he's starting to get pissed off right in chapter one for the first time in the series, series Lee, he tortures a fool, man. I'm, uh, normally I don't like to spoil stuff, but on this one, it, it doesn't really make a difference in the story, but it just kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. But at the beginning, he caught a, a furball who was pretty much a racist, uh, against humans and he killed the guy pretty easily. But before the guy could die, he healed him while he had like a weapon inside of him. And then he burned him and healed him and burned him. And he was doing it over and over with a smile on his face. And finally, Ling, uh, one of the NPCs that's rolling with him, she uh, killed the guy and was like, hey, what's wrong with you? So in the whole book, Ling is trying to protect Lee and keep him away from war, not because of how weak he is or how strong he is. He's plenty strong enough to defend himself. But she doesn't want him to go any darker. She's noticing that this fool is pretty much losing some of his humanity. And she's spending the entire book trying to protect that humanity. On the other end, Bridget is missing. And so her sister comes in into play and they're, you know, they're spending time trying to find the general. They finally find her and and she has been harassed by this new hero. This new hero uh, has the ability to get into your dreams and she can just mess with you. And so Lee is like, man, what the heck is going on? She actually captured Lee, like she got him in a dream in her dream world, and he couldn't do anything. He's like, man, this is a straight up cheat code. And so he finds a way to break out. And I'm gonna, you know, it's, I'm gonna let you get that in the book. Um, and I mean, the book is just an adventure, man. Like all over the place, they're going back and forth. Uh, towards the end, he goes back to, to, you know, try to get back with this girl, uh, Masha, the Russian. In, at the end of the book, but uh, I'm telling you, man, like book four is like, honestly, like I don't really, when I do, I'm more of a dabbler when it comes to book. And so if the book is out, I'll get it and I'll read it. I don't look and read and see like, oh, is there another book coming out? I read the book and then that's it. If the, another book doesn't come out, I don't look, I don't really look for it. And so the the way this book goes the like the amount of action in this book and how they how they're bringing things together i thought this was the last i thought this was the last book i thought this was the last installment and so this year when book five came out i it was a more of an insta buy i didn't wait i just got it but this book right here man i mean this could be in my opinion this could be a la the last book in the series um and some people they add another book and they should not have the fact that he added another book, the book made sense and it was a, even, even a better ending. But this book is, uh, for me, is my favorite of the series just because of how much things are going on, the action, um, you know, Lee just going against overpowered forces, but also showing that dark side of Lee where, you know, he doesn't mind just killing a fool. Like he will just quickly kill you. He doesn't get into any kind of conversations. Like if you talk him, and and you go on about it the wrong way, he will just slay you in front of everybody. I mean, he doesn't give a damn. And I like it when characters go dark like that. That's one of the things that I like about characters. But anyway, man, I know the review went a little long today. I try to keep between five to seven minutes, but I had to put Jade into it. And she deserves a whole, re like one whole review for herself. And so I'm actually thinking about that. But anyway, that's all I got today, man. I'll talk to you guys later.